If you're into electronics like I am, you'll find that a 3D printer is just as important as your computer, your soldering iron, your oscilloscope. It's so useful, and you don't have to spend a lot of money. I'll explain it all on today's Film It Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. I've been a fan of small printers, and I've had them on the channel many, many times. They're awesome because they're portable, they don't take up a lot of bench space, but yet they can print really good, and oftentimes they're relatively cheap. One of my most useful 3D prints for electronics is this 3D printed vise. I use it to hold circuit boards and other things. I've had this green one for a long time, and I've printed this same vise many, many times because it's so useful. Now many people new to 3D printing will think you can't print something this big on a small 180 by 180 millimeter bed size that most of these smaller printers have. But a lot of 3D prints, like this vise, come in pieces. So you print them in individual pieces and then put it together. So this whole vise will fit on a mini size printer, no problem whatsoever. And it'll take you six and a half hours to print a vise. And you'll have it for your workbench. And if a design has too many pieces or won't fit on a single bed, you can split it up into separate beds. In fact, you can print some with one color and some with another color to give you a two color design. So the possibilities are really endless what you can do. And if you have specific parts that need to be really strong or some parts that really don't matter, you can print those separately and still put the thing together and end up with a very useful tool like this vise that I use for holding circuit boards. I don't know what I'd do without it. Now sometimes you actually just want small prints, like this little tweezer clamp that I use for holding parts when I'm soldering. Say I have a kit like this, the Chipino kit, which is a design I made a long time ago. I've got these parts that want to fall out when I flip it over. Now you can bend the leads, but it's never perfect. I'd love it to just be flat. So when you put it in the clamp, you can see the parts are falling or they're angling, just like this. So I'd like something to hold them flat just so I can get those first solder joints on. So I designed this tweezer clamp in Tinkercad, and it's got offset fingers so I can still get to the solder joints. So one side has a little knob, and the other side has a cup and a grip. And this is a custom tool I really can't buy anywhere. I know there's clamps out there, but I wanted something specific that works for me. So I was able to design it and then print it out, and it really, it took 16 minutes to print one. And I was able to make modifications and reprint it and get exactly what I wanted. And it prints beautifully on a little printer. Now let me show you how this works and why I like it so much. So you take one side of this thing and flip it over the other side and it forms a tweezer clamp. And this thing is actually pretty strong. And I've got the ends offset so I can clamp something down and still get to the solder joints. Now here's an example where I'm soldering a crystal. Now the crystal, I could bend the leads underneath in opposing positions, but that actually twists the crystal and I hate it when it's done. So with this clamp, I can put it flat and hold it and solder it straight. And just like woodworking, you can never have enough clamps. So I can go back to the 3D printer at any point in time and print more. And this clamp works for various components, like this TO220 package. It holds it nicely and I can easily get to the solder joints, just like I wanted. It also works for longer parts, like this socket, 28-pin socket. I can clamp it down and still get to most of the solder joints to hold it in place. And it's even got a little cup in it, so I can grab rounded parts like this LED clamp it down, and still get to the solder joints. Now I can combine these clamps with my favorite vise. So clamp the board in place with the clips in place, and then I can go and solder a single or a couple joints on these parts, so then I can just remove the clamps and solder everything. So it's only to hold it temporarily. And sometimes I may even hit the clamp like I just did with the soldering iron. And if I do that enough, I'll just print another one. And this is definitely one of those tools that I didn't know I needed, and once I had it, I couldn't live without it. This has been so handy for soldering boards together like this. And here's the finished Chipino module, and I actually programmed it to go with it. And all that was done with the clips. Here's another example. This Quad A 9-volt battery shield plugs on top of an Arduino or the Chipino, and you can stack them for more power. But soldering those battery clips and getting them aligned... Well, that was helped by a 3D print. This thing lines up the clips before I put the board on. But sometimes it's hard to get those first couple to fit. So now I can use the clamps to hold those first couple. I actually could do the whole thing with these clamps if I wanted, but it's 3D prints helping me make custom jigs to make soldering easier. And it's not just about electronics tools. A stand like this to hold your phone is great for listening to music while I'm writing code or soldering. And I found this one 
on Tinkercad, although I modified it to add a speaker at the front of it to amplify the sound a little bit and let the sound come through. And this can actually fit on a small mini printer as well. It fits right within a 180 by 180 millimeter bed. And this thing prints in place, so it's a single print, take it off, and use it. So in a little over an hour and 15 minutes or hour and 14 minutes, you have a stand that can also hold your iPad for data sheets while you're looking up things while you're writing code. And this is just a small example of how handy a mini 3D printer can be on your electronics workbench. My Chipino board is a great way to introduce PCBWay.com because this is where I get all my circuit boards. I've been using them for years. You can get 10 pieces for $5 plus shipping, and they also have low-cost assembly services. So if you have a Kickstarter that takes off and you need help, they can help you. And if you need CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, or injection molding, they offer all that as well. So to get a quote, you just upload the Gerber file that you get from your board layout software, select what features you want, and it'll give you an instant quote so you know what it's going to cost. So check out PCBWay.com. It's a great resource for any electronic hobbyist. Now in this video I did use the Bamboo Lab A1 Mini. I've covered this in previous videos. It's a $199 closed source printer, but it works really well. And I've covered other mini printers on the channel, such as the Ender 2 Pro or the Prusa Mini. Prusa Mini is a little more expensive, but the support is fantastic from Prusa. The Ender 2 Pro, unfortunately, they've discontinued. So this you'd have to find on eBay. So don't let the size of these mini printers scare you off. Get yourself one for your workbench today, and you'll be glad you did. Special shout out to all the Patreon supporters and Thangs members who make this channel possible. I couldn't do it without you. Honestly, I couldn't do it. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or a membership at Thangs.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hollowbuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.